and let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, one of the main things that we hear from individuals starting a business like this and you know checking in and doing due diligence is you know what happens when I start talking with doctors offices and I don't feel like I have the credibility I need and of course this is a, a big question from anyone launching any business is you know how do I look credible how do I gain the trust of the uh, potential clients that I'm going to be working with and there's all kinds of questions that are within this category like um, when you walk into a doctor's office and they say well how many clients do you have or uh, do you have billing certification or how many years in, have you been in business uh, or you know why should I use your service you know versus you know any of the other services that might be available to them or their, their current service all great questions and what we teach you as uh, an American Business Systems li licensee, and we cover this in detail in our five days of live training, is to present yourself like this. You'll say, hi, my name is uh, Jason, just to pick a random name. And <laughs> I'm part of a nationwide network of over 1,500 offices, and we specialize in private practice revenue. And on average, we can usually increase uh, our clients revenue 20 to 30 um, percent would you be interested in a free practice analysis and that's kind of our lead-in and what we found is just the simple fact of positioning yourself and your company like that a lot of times will diffuse many of those questions before they're even asked okay you're part of a network of over 1500 offices well that kind of eliminates the uh, how many clients do you have objection uh, if you're part of such a large network certifications and qualifications don't really come up they ask how long you've been in business uh, well you're uh, part of a nationwide network that's been doing business for over two decades why should uh, a uh, potential doctor use your services it's pretty simple 20 to 30 percent potential revenue improvement we offer a free practice analysis to figure out which services might best benefit you. And so that's a, a quick tour of <laughs> how to position yourself with a doctor's office that you're calling on. And um, we find that that helps handle many of the upfront ob objections. Just simply uh, changing the way you, you uh, position your business and the way you talk about yourself. Yeah. Uh, exactly. It's all about how you present yourself <clears throat> as with any business. You know, so any any business that you're looking to promote or build, this is the, the same concept applies. So I think many people may be wondering, well, what if the doctor asks me some kind of billing question or coding question? You know, I, how do I how do I, I get this question a lot. How do I convince the doctors? I hear that word a lot. How do I convince them to use me when I don't have any experience? So you want to talk a little bit more about that, like the fact that we've, I mean, the fact that we've, you, you, you tell people that you are um, the owner of a business, you know, we, you just opened up a new local office, but like you said, you tell them, yeah, my office is brand new, but I'm a part of this national, you know, nationwide network, and we process thousands of claims every day, and you tell them I have people, because it's true, you have people that do a lot of the work for you that we'll talk about here uh, as far as the coding and, and some of the ancillary services that you'll be providing. You don't do the actual technical work for a lot of the services. Um, you have experts behind you that are doing that work for you. Yeah, you know, one interesting thing is the fear is there will be a curveball question. You know, a doctor's going to say, well, you know what, our biggest struggle is uh, we can't get code 99215 paid. Can you get that paid? <laughs> and now, if you had spent uh, a year training and getting your billing and coding certification, you still might not be able to answer that question because how do you know what the reason is that the doctor uh, can't get reimbursed for that particular code? So the answer to that question is always going to be, well, I have a team of certified coders and I can run that by and we can find out exactly why you're not getting reimbursed for that particular procedure code. And what you find is when you have a team of experts um, like you will as an American Business Systems licensee and a support network, 
where literally any question that a doctor or office manager fires at you, you can get a rock solid answer for. Uh, it really kind of changes the game on you know feeling like you're kind of flying blind in the doctor's office. Uh, in fact, an, an important point to make here is a lot of our top producing licensees, you know, licensees who have 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 plus clients, a lot of them have never filed a claim. Some of them are using builders and coders that they've hired um, and utilizing our uh, support system. So when they get questions like this, even though they're very, very seasoned as a licensee, they're still deferring to the expert coders to get these questions answered. Exactly right. And, and another point to bring up is the fact that the system that we have, the iClaim system, the fact that it's got all of these certifications that you see here. Any anytime there's any new rule or regulation or anything, you know, the government comes out with something that says, well, now a claim has to be filed this way or processed this way. We do all of those updates and certifications for you behind the scenes. So, so, it, so realistically, the system itself is what's maintaining the the the, uh, the excellent results and, and and revenue increases that we're seeing. So, I mean. In reality, you know, the system is what's get, doing so well for the doctors, and they're gonna, they're going to think that you're the genius behind it all. But really, it's the system that's just telling you how to process the the, uh, the claims to get the the most reimbursement. So, so we'll we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the iClaim system as we go here. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and go to uh, to step two, um, which is you know getting past gatekeepers. There's a lot of different industries where there's office managers and people that try to keep you from getting to the decision makers, the doctors, and or, or, or you know what what have you. And um, in, in fact, especially with regard to medical offices, we, we hear this a lot. Uh, you know, medical front office staff are trained to shut down salespeople. And so, you know, if you're thinking, well, I'm going to have to walk in and talk to somebody behind this bulletproof glass and try to get them to be interested in what I have, you know, get them to be interested in medical billing, you know, how in the world am I going to, you know, generate an interest by doing that? Well, we have a much better way of, of interacting with those people that we call the gatekeepers. <laughs> you see this lady here, she's, she's a gatekeeper. Who are you? Um, so instead of saying you're a medical biller, what, what is, you want to share, Jason, the typical uh, the approach that we teach people to take when, they, when they're actually doing direct contact? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I want to do a little demonstration here in a second. But first, I want to, uh, you might have mentioned this earlier, I'll just remind everyone that there's a little question panel on your control panel for GoToWebinar. And you can type a question in there to Adam and I. And as we go along, we will periodically take a quick break and take a question and uh, answer that live here on the air. And when we get to the end of this presentation, in about the next 30 minutes or so, uh, we'll actually try to handle as many questions as we can get to. So as we're going through here, feel free to type as many as you want. And when we get to that point, we'll start uh, picking up the questions and answering them. So here's the quick demonstration. Uh, Adam, if you will indulge me. So Adam, you're going to be our brave ABS licensee and I'm going to be the receptionist. And okay. all I want you to do is introduce yourself and talk about uh, the business that you have, uh, the medical billing business that you have, and ask if I have a need for those services. And I'll be the receptionist. We'll, we'll show you how this goes. Okay, so is this a worst case scenario, or what is this? <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is what would happen if you were using the, uh, the old, hi, my name's Adam, uh, I have a medical billing business. Okay, so uh, hi, uh, is uh, is this the offices of uh, of uh, Dr. Jones and Smith? Sure is. How can I help you? Well, uh, I uh, took a course on uh, billing, and I have some medical billing services, and I would like to see if I could help you with that. Are you? Do you need any help with your medical billing right now? You know, Adam, we appreciate you stopping by, but we already have a medical biller, and um, I've got to let you go because uh, I've got some patients that are waiting to see me. Thanks. Okay, for well, time. let me let me give you my business card. Let me give you my business card. Can you can you at least take that from me? Sure. Thanks. And uh, you know, we'll we'll see you later. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks. Bye. And uh, if you could see me live on camera here, I'm taking Adam's business card and I'm promptly putting it into the garbage can beside me. 
as a receptionist. And uh, we're kind of being funny here, but but literally, if you go into a doctor's office and your presentation to the receptionist or whoever you manage to talk with, if you present that um, you have medical billing services and ask them if they have a need for those kinds of services or, or whatever your you know sentence might be that you use, um, you're typically going to get that response because why? They already have the solution in place. Either they already have a medical biller in their office that handles that or they already send it out to a third-party biller. So you're asking a question that you already know the answer to. The answer is no. We have the solution, thanks but no thanks. Uh, so one of the first things we teach uh, for getting past the gatekeeper is <laughs> go back to uh, step number one, which was learn how to position yourself properly. So you're going to talk about being part of a nationwide network um, and specializing in increasing revenue for private practices. Uh, so that's step one. Um, but what we really want to talk about uh, in the rest of this section is some of the other kind of secret weapons that our licensees use to get past the gatekeeper. And uh, the next one is going to be the networking groups. And Adam, I'll let you talk a little bit about this. So this is by far the number one method that we teach in our live training. We have a dozen or so different marketing methods that we teach that we know are getting a good response. Uh, but out of those dozen, there are some that kind of float to the top every time we hear success stories. And licensees tell us time and time again, networking, networking, networking. Well, what does that mean? Um, you're not, you're not going to be going to different networking events. Uh, well, let me back up. Networking events are places where you can go and meet people from other industries and um, you know, try to find out if anyone uh, has any type of need that you can help them with or maybe refer someone to them for whatever service they have that they're offering. So a lot of times it's going to be you know, an early morning breakfast or maybe a luncheon or things in the evenings or on the weekends. You're not going to these things looking for doctors or even office managers. What you're doing is, is and, we, and we show you how to do this, we show you how to find people in industries who make a lot of sense to be strategic partners for you. In other words, other, industry pe uh, other industries that work with doctors, but they don't do things like medical billing and some of the other stuff that we do. IT companies, uh, real estate, uh, realtors, CPAs, attorneys, those are all good examples of people who work with doctors, but they don't do billing. So that's somebody you really want to get to know, and that's a relationship that you want to develop. And that's really what networking is all about, is just building relationships with people so that you can get some type of warm referral down the road from, from some doctor that they may know that may mention that they need help uh, in some area. And when it comes to networking groups, you know, a lot of us have that concept of, you know, nothing really happens in networking groups. Everybody shows up and passes their business card around, and uh, that's the extent of it. It doesn't really generate any, you know, kind of real connections. But what we have found uh, through our licensees of exploring this as a marketing method is it's most commonly the way our licensees are getting their first client. You know, it's uh, not the easiest thing in the world to walk into a doctor's office for your first time and, you know, as our next point says, get, get past the gatekeeper. Uh, but connecting with other business professionals who are tied to doctor's offices who can give you a warm referral can really make that a more kind of pleasant process. Uh, you get an introduction to a doctor and they already know who you are and what you do. And it can make it a lot um, more of kind of an easier transition than just walking in blind into an office. Uh, but yeah. making the gatekeeper the hero, that, that pass point, uh, really all we need to touch on on that is to say that our services are designed to increase revenue for doctors' offices. Uh, most of the time, our licensees can provide an increase of 20 to 30%. So one of the ways to make the gatekeeper the hero is to explain that to them and say that they can be the one that um, helps make the introduction. And if you're able to make that kind of an increase in the doctor's revenue, uh, that will in turn make the gatekeeper the hero. And uh, you can help them get part of the credit for it. Uh, so um, you help the, the gatekeeper, the receptionist, you help the office manager who's going to be also a part of that process by the time you actually get the doctor in the decision process 
you got a you know small team that you've built within the doctor's organization already, and you know the doctor is definitely going to pay attention when they say, "Listen, uh, Adam has demonstrated to us through a practice analysis already that we're looking at a 23% increase in revenue by switching over to uh, his billing service and using his software." So we thought it would be a great idea to do a demo. So that's one excellent way to sort of get into the uh, the office, uh, the easy way, so to speak. Yeah, and uh, we've got some questions coming in here. Uh, I've got a question here from Joseph. He's saying, uh, that's all fine and, and well, but I'm not very comfortable with marketing. I have no, I've never been in sales before. Is Can you tell me a little bit more about the sales rep program, the slide that we just saw? Yeah, so... <clears throat> For the sales rep program, you know, I would say, Adam, you can corroborate this with me. Probably the most common objection from individuals who are looking into a business like this is, you know, once you have explored the opportunity and you start visualizing going into doctor's offices and actually doing the sales and marketing, one of the most common objections is, man, I just cannot see myself uh, walking in the door and being confident enough to talk intelligently to the receptionist or office manager or doctor about these services. It's just, you know, I don't have a sales and marketing background. Um, it's not my personality type. You know, I've, I'm more like to do the operational side, but the sales side is scary to me. And we definitely understand this, and that's why we have implemented our sales rep program. And what we can do with our sales rep program, and we, we teach this in our five days of live training here in Dallas. Uh, by the way, our next training session is coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, November 2nd through the 6th. So if you're considering uh, making a move, that would be a great time to do it. Contact your rep to get more information on that. Uh, but the sales rep program is something we've designed to help those licensees who just are not going to go get over the hurdle of the initial fear of marketing uh, directly to a doctor. So here's how it works. We help connect you with local medical sales reps, and we teach you how to um, give them marketing materials, how to find them, how to work a commission agreement. And then what you're doing is you're leveraging that sales rep's contact database, the doctors that they already know and are doing business with, and you're using that to get very quick high-level, warm introductions to doctors who the sales rep knows can utilize your services. So it's an incredible fast track to pinpointing doctors that are great candidates for your services and getting a warm introduction because the person introducing already knows about the doctor's business. Uh, so this is a great way. Uh, we teach this in our five days of live training, and there's some licensees who've deployed whole teams of medical sales reps and grown their businesses incredibly fast. Uh, so it's a, it's a great program that we've got. Uh, Adam, I think you might be on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that's been working really well, that sales rep program. Um, I would say once you go through our live training, though, um, many, many, many folks who have uh, you know, come to the training class thinking, oh, I'm, I'm terrified of marketing, I'm terrified of any kind of selling or anything. Uh, they actually go through the training and at the end of the class on Friday they say, you know what, there are some methods that I can use that I'm totally comfortable with now, now that I've gone, gone through the training program. So, uh, and one of the things that um, you should actually look forward to is being able to overcome rejections by getting no's. And I don't know if you guys have... Uh, have, have, have thought of the certain method that, uh, there's, a, there's a book that came out, I think, where it was like, start with, it's, what is it called, start with no, or go for no, or something like that, I forget what the book is called, but basically it's, it's just saying, hey, look, when you're out there telling people about your business, you're going to get no's, so instead of taking that as a discouragement, um, you should actually look forward to those no's, because you know that after a certain number of no's, you're going to get a yes, just, it's just a numbers game. So what we've actually found um, in our, uh, you know, licensees, feedback that we've gotten from licensees and different marketing methods, we're seeing about nine no's to get a yes right now. Um, and so it's, 
it's a very, very, uh, a lot of the services are very, very needed. And when we do that practice analysis for the doctors and they actually see the numbers, they can see what their current costs are and see what the potential savings are. It's just a, it's just a win-win for everybody. And, uh, and, and I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but it's about nine no's to get one yes right now is what we're looking at. Yeah, you know, Adam, I was on the, the phone with a candidate uh, that was looking into American business systems last night, actually, and he was, you know, asking a lot of questions, and one of the questions he asked kind of falls into this category, is, you know, what, what would you say is one of the most um, common reasons for failure in a, in a business like this? And, you know, I thought about it for a minute, and... It, with us, it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint why you know someone might decide not to you know continue running their business. Um, since we're we're not a franchise, we don't require financial reporting, so we might not hear back from someone, and we don't necessarily know that they have uh, s stopped running their business. So that wouldn't necessarily equal failure for us. But you know, occasionally it's human nature. From time to time, we'll get a call in our um, licensee support line, and it'll be a licensee who is upset because they've tried uh, to get a client, and um, they feel like they're unsuccessful, and they feel like their, their marketing isn't going anywhere. And what we have found is the licensees who um, run, it, run into that failure point are the ones who don't understand this principle, that it takes some no's to get to your first client. Um, and if you get discouraged by the first or second or third person that says, you know, medical billing is, you know, how is that even a thing? You know, everybody already has a medical biller. Uh, any number of objections can follow that. Uh, you know, what are you doing? This isn't a business model that works, and there's all kinds of negativity that's out there. If you can't handle hearing that two or three times, uh, it's going to be a challenging business for you. Um, what we have found, all of our successful licensees in the 22-year history of, of us launching businesses in this industry, common theme is tenacity and not giving up when you're out there marketing. Continuing with the marketing plan that we set up, and you know, a lot of times it doesn't even take that, you know, seventh, eighth, or ninth. No, it's just it's a matter of actually just getting out there and uh, making connections and following up with uh, the doctors that you're calling on. In fact, very commonly we'll hear from licensees who got told no but continued to uh, send a postcard every month or every quarter to that doctor and a year from then all of a sudden they get a response to a mailer because they had a problem with their biller and their biller quit or their biller moved out of town or something happened or they figured out the biller wasn't doing a good job then they have that marketing they see your piece they remembered you from the year before and they give you a call that, that's actually happened an uncanny amount of time. So very important to understand this principle. Yeah, and I don't know if any of you guys uh, know this, but we do a live webinar every Wednesday. And I did one recently where I interviewed a licensee from Ohio, Wendy Bruno. And she has been a, a licensee since uh, 07 or 08, somewhere around there. And she started out you know, with the nine no's to get a yes thing. But now she's to the point where she signs one new client every month. She is signing up one new client every month. So this nine knows to get a yes thing, it's only in the beginning, you know, as you're starting from, you know, as you're building your business from the ground up. I mean, once you start getting clients, you're going to start getting referrals from those clients and, and uh, it's, it's going to, it just has kind of a snowball effect uh, because the doctors can see the results very quickly in the system. Um, the other thing about uh, comfort in numbers is talking a little bit about the numbers of of our licensees as a whole. Uh, Jason, you want to talk a little bit about this next slide coming up and the, um, as far as what, what, we're do, what we're seeing as far as our business numbers, our, our new client acquisition uh, for, for doctors? Yeah, yeah, I sure do. And uh, actually, we're um, just about halfway through the presentation here. We're going into step four in a minute. And before I talk about these numbers, I just say, you know, we've, we've got a few questions that are starting to queue up. And after section four that we're about to hit in a minute here, uh, we'll take a few questions. Uh, so thanks for sending those in. There's a lot of good ones that are in there. And Adam, if you want to uh, pick a few out, maybe we'll handle those after the next section. Um, sure. So it, it's funny. You know, Adam and I have a distinct advantage because um, we're here in the home office in uh, Fort Worth, and we have the ability to um, see 
the information that comes across from our licensees who are out there building their businesses. And, you know, we get to see some of the reports and everything. And it, when we get objections like, um, oh, there's no market uh, where I am. Uh, there's, you know, uh, my, what if my territory has, you know, three or four other American business systems licensees? Um, or, you know, you don't understand the New York market. The New York market is really competitive. And all these different sort of market questions of is there really a need for this kind of business? I just laugh when I hear it because um, the last five years with American business systems consecutively have been the best five years in our 22-year history. Each year in the last five years has been better than the year before. And so in 2015, you know, currently we're at the most year-to-date new doctors on our billing and practice management platform in our 22-year history. So 2015, right now, we're on pace to have our largest year ever. Um, 2014 was our best year ever. And, uh, you know, May of 2015 was our best month in, you know, our, our entire history as a company. And so we're, we get to see these reports and, uh, you know, we get to hear all the success stories and everything. And we try to broadcast those as much as we can. It always just makes me chuckle when we get a market question that, you know, oh, my market is the one market where this isn't possible. No way. Our licensees are signing up literally a client a day right now um, all across yeah. the U.S. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have, we have licensees in the smallest town that you can imagine with, with dozens of clients. Um, a tiny little city called Yuba City, California, is one of li one of our licensees. It has over 40 clients, and we have licensees in some of the biggest markets in in the country as well: Chicago, New York, you name it. So you're absolutely right. I mean, this this program and these services work for any doctor anywhere in the entire entire United States, virtually any specialty as well. Do you want to go ahead and talk about uh, step four, and then do questions? Sure can. Okay, so step four, show, don't tell. Uh, this is uh, Jeffrey Gitmer. He is a, an author on, uh, he's written many, many different sales books, uh, books on how to, uh, on selling, uh, making connections, networking. If you guys haven't read his stuff, you definitely should check it out. Um, they're full of uh, lots of good information, lots of humor as well. Uh, but he says, people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. And that's really true, um, you know, in a lot of different areas, a lot of different markets. But, um, you know, one thing that we do with the, that we've kind of been talking about uh, as we go here is, you're you're not offering, you're not going to be offering any particular service or talking about any particular fees or anything until you have a better picture as to what's going on in a certain doctor's practice. So every bit of the, our process, our, our, our upfront marketing with these marketing materials, this is one of the many flyers that you'll see that I'm showing here, you, the revenue cycle management flyer. But all the marketing materials, the print materials, the website that we give you, everything is focused on getting someone to do that free practice analysis, you know, totally free consultation that we teach you how to do. And it's very simple. Um, it's a series of questions that we give you to ask, and usually you're doing it with the office manager, sometimes the doctor, but you can do it in about 15 minutes or so. And you're asking them different things about their, their, their practice, how it's running internally, what type of systems they have, um, uh, you know, what, what, what their rejection rate is currently, how long does it take for them to get paid, what their staff you know, cost is, and different things like that. And so you're able to put together this picture that a lot of times, uh, you can actually, well, what you do is you, we actually give you a, a tool where you can plug in the information that they give you and uh, you can print out a report using this practice analysis tool that we give you that you can take back to the office manager and you can say, okay, look, based on what we talked about, based on what you told me, I've identified some costs and different things that could definitely use some improvement, some identified some areas where you could improve. And um, you know, from there, we have actually seen uh, a lot of times when they do this initial practice analysis tool, right out, right out of the gate, we can tell that there's going to be a 30% improvement in their cash flow. And I know that we've been using that number as we, as we go through this webinar here, but it, it, 
it really is a real figure that we've heard from some of our licensees. Some of our licensees have told us, you know what, my client that I have, my, my doctor that I signed up, told me that if I hadn't come along and, and started doing uh, some of the services that I'm doing for him, he would have had to just close his doors and retire early. And he did not want to do that, so he was very grateful you know, for my services. Yeah, so Adam, I think if we're finished with this section, we might take just a minute to take uh, maybe three or four questions before we go into the kind of uh, last few uh, sections of our presentation. We've got a lot of great ones, so you know I've got a, a couple queued up if you want to take a look and maybe find uh, uh, the next question. Um, and we, we've got quite a few. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'll answer a really quick one. Uh, how long is this presentation is uh, one of the questions. And typically, our webinars go for an hour. So at the top of the hour, which would be 4 o'clock central, uh, we'll be wrapped up with this webinar. And uh, thanks for your question there. Um, I am uh, also going to take another one. And uh, this question is a, has kind of a long answer. I'll try to make it as short as I can. How does the licensee make money? Which is from Jennifer. And that's actually a great question. Um, so when you're doing the billing for a doctor, uh, the way that it works is you're going to file the insurance claim on the doctor's behalf, and you'll file the insurance claim with the insurance company, and the health insurance company will pay the doctor uh, directly. And you and the doctor and, of course, the patient will all get a notification of, uh, that that claim has been paid. And then at the end of the month, you're going to invoice the doctor for... Um, your billing percentage, uh, the percentage, the rate that you charge for your billing service, you're going to invoice them for that percentage um, of the total claims that you've gotten the doctor reimbursed for for that month. Um, our licensees typically will charge 6 to 8% as the fee for offering the billing service to the doctor. Um, so what does that mean in real, doc in real dollars? We're going to cover this uh, a little later in a couple of slides, but what that means is the average doctor's office is usually going to generate twenty-five dollars to $35,000 a year in income for you. And uh, that, that was a great question. We're just kind of taking a highlight of it right there. Uh, but that's how you as an ABS licensee will make money. Yeah, um, that, that was a real good question, Jennifer. Uh, it's important to note that you, you know, the licensees are in complete control of what they charge, when they invoice doctors, and ABS doesn't handle your money, and you actually don't handle the doctor money's the doctor's money directly either. They get paid directly from the insurance company, so it's all very, uh, very above board, and uh, you know, no one has to worry about anyone uh, kind of messing with their money. But uh, we're going to help you in every single scenario. Your pricing is going to be slightly different, and so that's one thing that we support you on is we go through that needs analysis and the services that you're going to be offering, and we make recommendations on where your pricing should be. Uh, but like Jason said, it's it's usually going to be in the range of five to nine percent, somewhere in there in that range. But good question. Um, Matthew has got a really long question here that's basically saying, I live in Pennsylvania. There's a, a large health network that's come in and controls uh, the major hospitals in the area, and it seems more and more independent doctors seem to be aligning themselves with them daily. Uh, I assume all their billing is done centrally. Question is. Does this business model basically thrive off independent offices as opposed to these large health systems? So that's a real good question. Um, your, your target market in the beginning as you're building your business is going to be the private practices and clinics, small to medium size to large size, the ones that are doing their, their own private uh, practice filing. Um, to, to, uh, with regards to the doctors that are uh, starting to join the hospital networks, um, the only thing that has to be determined is sometimes they're joining those hospital networks, but they're still doing their own billing. So that's just something that's going to have to be determined. But yes, if, if the hospital is doing the billing for a particular doctor, that's not really going to be your target market because the hospital systems are uh, a completely different, uh, completely different animal. So that's not really a target market. So that's a good, that's a good question there. Um, now, Adam, if, let's take one more quick one. Now, Jennifer had a follow-up question to the... Uh, how do I make money question. Mm -hmm. uh, she asks, what does the licensee pay ABS monthly? And that is a great question. It's one of the huge advantages to American business systems versus 
the standard, uh, what you would call franchise model. Typically with a franchise, you're going to pay between 5 to 10 percent as a, a royalty, uh, which is a percentage of the revenue you generate with your business, and that's paid back to the franchisor. Well, American Business Systems is a business opportunity, not a franchise, and we do not have it set up that way. So you will actually not pay American Business Systems anything. The money you make is the money you keep. There's no royalties. Uh, there's no membership dues. We don't call it anything else. Uh, so it truly is you're running your own independent business, and you collect and keep all of the revenue for yourself. Great. And we got a, we got a uh, from Charles, not a question but a comment. I've been in sales for over 20 years and I still get excited to hear a no because I'm one step closer to a yes, which gets me paid. No's <laughs> are really awesome. <laughs> That's great. Charles, you will do fantastic in this business. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that comment. Um, should we continue on with the presentation? What do you think? Let's do it. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Step five, build an expert team. So in any business, you want to have experts behind you. Like we mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, you're not going to be the expert in the beginning as you're running this business. You're going to tell people right out of the gate, look, I'm not the, I'm not the coding expert. You know, I don't have all the technical answers. I am the business owner. I'm the head honcho of this business. So anything that you need, I'm going to give you my cell phone. And if you have any issues at all, you call me and I help you out. I mean, that's, that speaks volumes to doctors because there are doctors that try, you know, um, outsourcing to, you know, companies overseas, for example, and they're just not happy with the technology. You know, maybe they're unhappy with the customer service. If you provide exceptional customer service, that's really all that it takes because the technology will take care of the rest. The iClaim system will take care of the rest. So every step of the way, we have got people See those happy, smiling people with the microphones, the headsets? That's our, that's our people. They're helping you with everything that you could possibly imagine and need help with. Upfront marketing, initial engagement. We help with practice analysis that we mentioned over and over. We help you put together your proposals, your pricing. We actually do a full software demo based on that needs analysis that you do for them, that practice analysis, we take a look at that and we do a customized, tailored, for your doctor, demonstration of the billing platform and the electronic medical records platform. Um, and we do those for free for the life of your business. And uh, I think we're going to, oh, yeah. And then, and then the final yeah. part is the training and implementation as well for the system. And Adam, Did you want to say something there? Yeah, I got to cut in here and just say that uh, if you go to the next slide, in the words of uh, Donald Trump, this is huge. <laughs> um, so our, our expert software demos have over a 50% closing ratio. That means you have a 50-50 shot of any doctor that you get on a demo um, moving forward and doing business with you. That's unbelievable. And, and Charles, I know on this call, has got some sales experience. 50% closing ratio, that's the things that, you know, dreams are made of in sales. And how in the world do we have a 50% closing ratio? Well, it's because our licensees are taught to lay the groundwork before getting a doctor and an office manager um, onto a software demo. You've got to do the practice analysis. You've got to do the proposal. You have to demonstrate that you have financial gain for the doctor doing business with you. And they say, okay, wow, I bill you know, a lot of money per month. I'm going to get a 18% increase in revenue, 20% increase in revenue. It's only going to cost me 6 or 7% or whatever. That sounds like a pretty good deal, but hold on, let me look at this software. But when they see it, they love it. And yeah. um, we hear doctors all the time say, uh, this this is amazing. You know, where do I sign? I've got to have that. So our software is absolutely cream of the crop. And when you get that demo done, you'll see why. Yeah, and uh, I kind of glossed over this real quick, but that last point down there, that is huge. When you get a doctor to sign a contract with you, we actually take over and do all of the training and implementation for the doctor and their staff on using the system. So you don't even have to worry about that part either. I mean, so we're, 
we're so heavily involved all the way through this process. I mean, it's, it's such a team effort in, in getting clients, getting business, and then getting them, once you get the business, once you get the client, getting them ramped up and actually using the system and sending you claims so that you can send them invoices, so that you can get money. See how that works? So let's, let's talk about step six. Stand out. So you want to be that, that little red ball right there. You don't want to be the sad blue circles. <laughs> <laughs> red, red face good, uh, blue face bad. We're, we're there. <laughs> Next Almost slide. said something else. That would have been awkward. Yeah. Um, so one of the things, and we've mentioned this time and time again, is have a great product in any business that you're selling. Make sure that you, first of all, make sure that you love what you're offering and love what you're doing. Um, we do. I don't know if you can tell, but have a great product. And our great product is our iClaim and EMRX platform. It is so user friendly, and, and you know we mentioned those demos over and over. Every time we do a demo for a doctor, we hear at least one or two wows. We we literally we hear doctors lean over to their office managers and say, "Our system doesn't do anything like that, right?" And they're like, "No, it doesn't. This is cool." Um, you know, so I mean, so here's just a small list of uh, the many, many, many features. It's meaningful use certified, ICD-10 ready. It does e-prescriptions, real-time eligibility. A lot of this stuff might not mean much to you right now, but call us up and, and schedule a demo with your ABS rep, and we'll show you kind of what a day in the life of a licensee looks like using the system. We'll also kind of show you what, how the doctors interact with the system as well. It's got a lot of neat stuff uh, that you can look at. But really, you know, talking, talking about standing out, you're going to be set apart because of the system, but also because of all the marketing materials and the way that we, uh, the, the amount of money that we've spent developing these different marketing tools, marketing you know, flyers and postcards, the website that you get, the doctors are going to have no idea, you know, even if you're working from home in your boxer shorts, they're not going to have any idea that you're doing that, you know, the way that you appear to the doctors, the way that you present yourself. And that's really the key to this whole thing is just pr presentation. And, and when we do the demos for the doctors and they, and they see that you've got all these experts behind you doing a lot of this, this work for you, they're going to be blown away. Adam, our next section is about irresistible pricing. And uh, we maybe should have titled this section, Show Me the Money. <laughs> this, is where, um, this is where we get real. So this falls into the category of, well, how much can I make? as an ABS licensee. We've talked about that a little bit, the 25 to 35,000 a year. Um, but we're also going to answer the question, why would a doctor want to do business with me? There's one simple reason, money. So let's, let's get to the numbers now. All right, so the average medical billing client is going to generate, as we said before, around 25 to $35,000 a year for you the ABS licensee. That's how much you should make on, with an average client, and this is conservative. We have an income calculator on our main website you can go play around with, and you'll see that this is a pretty conservative uh, estimate. Now that's based on 20 to 40 claims a day, 100 to $125 a claim, and between a 6 to an 8 percent rate. And uh, when you go into the um, income calculator on our website, um, you'll see that we use the lowest of all of these numbers. And uh, it's interesting to play around with. If you haven't gone and looked at the income calculator, go check it out. But Jason, why in the heck would a doctor want to pay you 6 to 8% of their revenue? Adam, I am so glad that you asked. Thank you for that question. Because on our next slide, we will see if you take an average private practice, a doctor's office, with a monthly revenue of 100000 um, now we're doing this to have easy round numbers, but 30%, if they're getting a revenue increase in the 30% range, that's $30,000 a month of increase. Let's say they're getting a 20% increase. That's $20,000 a month increase. How much are they paying you? Twenty-five dollars to $35,000 a year. How much is their increase? Twenty dollars to $30,000 a month. So it's very important to understand that the reason that a doctor would do business with you is the revenue gains that they make 
on a monthly basis far outweigh what they're going to pay you to provide the service. And that's why they'll choose you to do their billing. Other companies will go in and say, they're doing 6%, I'll do 5.5% for the billing. The doctor says, don't care. Why? Because it's about increase, not the lowest rate. It's about the most increase. And the way that our service is positioned, the way our software is tuned, the doctor gets massive increases to revenue. So that's a very important point to uh, remember <laughs> when you're out there marketing. That's why a doctor chooses you. It's all down to money. Yeah, and a big part of that revenue increase is coming from the fact that more claims are going to be paid on the first submission with our system. We can actually reduce a doctor's claim rejection rate to less than 2%. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the average rejection rate for, for the average doctor's practice is like 30% or more. So reducing it down to less than 2%, that means they're getting paid a lot more for a lot more claims that they weren't getting paid on before. The other thing is, is our licensees are actually sending the old claims from the doctor's old system that got rejected, they're sending them through our system and they're getting a lot of those to be paid on the first submission. So they're getting a lot of those old claims paid as well. So it's, 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 yeah, I mean, they're just loving it. <laughs> uh, let's see, so step eight. We're at, we're at step eight, solutions, not sales. Again, you want to have multiple solutions based on what they really need. You're never going to, yes, as a licensee, you have access to nine services, nine different services and solutions that we have. But you're never going to offer all of those nine to a doctor. I mean, that, that's silly. You're going to offer them what they really need based on that analysis that you do, that practice analysis. So, you know, it may be that they might need help with their, their medical claim filing. Maybe they're looking for an electronic medical record system or different payment options for patients uh, to pay what they owe that's not covered by insurance or coding help or marketing tools or, or who knows what. But you want to make sure that you are a full service solution provider. So in other words, you want the doctors to think of you for anything that they need outside of practicing medicine. If they ask you if you can do something, even if you don't know what it means, you should tell them, yeah, I can do that for you. And then you call ABS and say, what in the heck is this guy talking about? Can you help me? And we'll help you find somebody who can provide whatever service they need. Full service. You know, kind of like an all-inclusive resort. Do you want to pay $15 a margarita, or do you want to have the band on where you can drink all day for free? <laughs> okay, so we've got an absolute ton of questions and some really good ones. And feel free to uh, pile your question in there as well, and we'll try to get to as many as we can until the top of the hour. Uh, so I've got uh, a, a couple here. The first thing I want to mention, uh, Donna, you just put wow in all uppercase with about eight exclamation points. And, uh, Donna, I don't know what part of the presentation made you type that, uh, but we're glad that you did. And if you want to put a note in there, <laughs> what exactly was uh, the, the trigger for that comment, I'd appreciate it. Uh, that's, that's funny. Uh, thank you for your comment, Donna. We're glad you're enjoying the webinar. Uh, the next uh, question I'd like to take real quick, and Adam, you can uh, go ahead and get the next question queued up. This one's an easy answer. Uh, so from Dev, uh, hey Dev, uh, glad you made it on the uh, program here today. He asks, uh, how do we know which claims got paid and how much so we can invoice the doctor? Uh, excellent question, and we're not doing a software demonstration today, but if we were, we would show you the reporting section where you can generate a report showing all of the reimbursements for that month. It's a one-click report. It shows all of uh, the dollars that have been paid to the doctor, and you'll attach that with your invoice when you send it into the doctor's office. Um, so that report is actually built into the iClaim billing and practice management uh, platform. So good question, though. Yep, that's a good one. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, man, where do I start? Okay, so Bill asked a question, uh, with the assistance of the sales reps, does it help reduce time to find those first one or two accounts? <clears throat> first one or two accounts, yes. Absolutely, Bill. I mean, the more people that you can get out building your business, the better. Um, 
I would say, you know, in my opinion, I would I would go out and do some of the, uh, the the business development and marketing myself. And if I, you know, happen to know someone who was a sharp person who could go out and and talk about the services on my behalf, I would have them going out there and doing it as well. So the more the more people you can go out spreading the word, the better. Uh, and the and the neat thing about this opportunity is there's no um, restrictions on where you do the marketing, no no uh, restricted territory. So if you knew someone in another state even, they could be marketing in that state uh, for, for your business as well. So good question there. Yeah, great uh, you see any other ones, Jason? Yeah. Uh, so Donna responded, I'd, I'd ask uh, what prompted her wow uh, comment before, <clears throat> and she replied and said, all of it. <laughs> so uh, Donna, we really appreciate it. Uh, you're cracking me up. It's it's great to have enthusiasm, and we'd love to see you in our November training. If uh, you're interested, contact your rep, and they can uh, let you know how to join us in November, and we'll continue that enthusiasm right into getting your first clients for you. So uh, thanks for your continued comments. Uh, this is a real quick question. Um, Lamar is asking if we send out sample marketing kits to potential licensees. And uh, Lamar, we do, um, although it's somewhat uncommon. You can contact your uh, ABS rep and they can uh, give you information on how to get that. Uh, but we recommend, instead of the marketing kit, all of the information in the marketing kit, plus tons more, is available in our virtual brochure. And if you don't already have access to that, contact your ABS rep. Let them know you want access to the virtual brochure. And I promise you it will have so much more information than a marketing kit. Uh, there's no sense in wasting a stamp and sending you some paper. Uh, it's all online, and you can check it all out right there. But good question. Thank you, Lamar. Yeah, Jennifer is asking, what's the average time to ROI? I don't know if we mentioned this, but if you do the math on what our licensees are making right now, um, worst case scenario. If you just signed up one doctor and that was it, you would still see an ROI in about a year because licensees make about 25k a year on each doctor. So, and that's I mean that is absolute worst case. I mean, our licensees are signing up an average of what, four to six doctors a year if it's just one person out there doing the marketing. So, you know, you can see how the revenue can can start ramping up very quickly as you start adding uh, more and more clients. And she also asked a question about uh, do you provide exclusive territories for the licensee? I don't like to call them exclusive territories. I like to call them restrictive territories. And, and really, when you think about how this industry works, doctors are very good at networking and, and sending referrals you know, to their colleagues if they find a new service that they love. So you could have doctors in any part of the country as clients. In fact, some of our licensees, through different referrals that they got, the bulk of their clients are not even in their state. They're, they're out of state. Like 80% of their clients are out you know, in a different state. So the sky's the limit as far as who you market to. Um, Adam, uh, I'm, I'm thinking back. Did you already cover Charles' question about uh, closing ratio and decision maker? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> No, I, I didn't. I blanked out for a second there. I wanted to make sure I'm not duplicating your efforts. Uh, uh, Charles was talking about, uh, uh, you know, our objection and, you know, nine no's to get a yes earlier. So it sounds like Charles has got some sales background. He said, uh, through your years of service, have you found that the office manager is the main person in the decision maker? And then he adds, by the way, I would kill for a 50% closing ratio. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we're very, very proud of that. And our uh, software experts do an amazing job, and uh, we're, we're extremely proud of, of our closing ratio with those demos. So <clears throat> the decision maker is most often it's a, a dual effort, and so you're trying to get initial engagement with the receptionist and office manager to establish rapport. Um, go through the practice analysis, do your information gathering and your proposal and everything. But um, the doctor usually comes in after you've convinced the office manager that uh, there's financial gain to be made. And then the doctor is, of course, involved you know, as the you know, primary business owner and decision maker. They're the kind of the end of the line. Uh, but you know, the way that we get there is just as you mentioned, through a software demo, you've already demonstrated the financial gain and then when you get to the software demo side, uh, they love it. They see the software. They want it. 
and they already know that they're going to be increasing their revenue. So it's like it's like a win-win for everybody. Uh, but most often it's first the office manager, then the final decision is usually the doctor. Great question, though. Thanks, Charles. I appreciate your input. Yeah, so I've got two minutes past the hour. Uh, just as a reminder, folks, the uh, next training class is November uh, 2nd through the 6th. We do have seats available for that class. Uh, if you want to get in, let us know. We'd love to have you there. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to, to get you there. Um, and last but not least, you know, our tagline is American Business Systems, the fastest way to start your medical billing business guaranteed. And, uh, you know, I get that question a lot. <clears throat> what, what kind of guarantee is there that I'll get clients? Well, there's not any guarantee that you'll get any certain number of clients. We can't do that. But we can share you uh, success stories and case studies and everything that we experience on a daily basis from uh, our licensees out in the field. Um, and we do offer a guarantee for the people that come to our live training. So I'll just share that with you guys uh, as a final note here. Um, you know, it, go through the process of due diligence. Talk to reference, you know, talk to current business owners that we have. Get, see a, see a, a, a system demo, if you will. Uh, talk to one of your ABS reps uh, that we have available to talk to and uh, make the decision to come to our training class. And if you go through the entire live class, Monday through Friday, and for whatever reason you decide this is not for you, you just don't feel like it's going to be a, a good fit for you, it doesn't matter what the reason is, we will give you 100% of your money back. Okay? We will give you a refund at the end of the class and we can part as friends and uh, you know, that's how much we believe in the quality of our live training. Um, so just want to let you guys know that that's there as a kind of a, a safety net, you know, for those that, that are scared to, to pull the trigger. You can, you, can, you can do it. You can pull the trigger, go through the training, and, and uh, get your money back if you don't like it. So uh, I don't know of any other business opportunity or franchise that has that kind of offer on the table, but, uh, but we have that in writing in our agreement. So anyway, Jason, thanks for your time. Uh, today, I know you've got a real busy schedule. I appreciate you taking an hour out of your day uh, to be on here with us. I'm sorry if we didn't get to your questions, guys. We will be posting this uh, webinar uh, up uh, on our site uh, tomorrow, so we can send you a recording if you like. And uh, if you didn't get your questions answered, feel free to just give us a call, and we'll certainly uh, do what we can to get those questions answered. But uh, thanks for being on here, Jason, and everybody have a wonderful day. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.